This is the Spurs Cast with your host, Paul Garcia. And welcome back to another episode of the Spurs Cast. In today's episode, I'll be discussing the Spurs' last four games and some recent roster moves by the team. Let's go ahead and jump right into this episode. Well, Happy New Year. Um, this is now 2024. I'm recording this episode on Wednesday uh, afternoon to Mountain Time. So I hope everyone had a great New Year. The Spurs are well, we're back in action for a few games since I last recorded an episode um, before the New Year. And they actually got a win uh, in that time frame. So let's go ahead and discuss the last four games and then uh, what's going on with the team. Especially, we're going to be more concentrated in this episode on um, some roster moves by the team uh, to, that, that, the, that the team made in the last few days. So let's let's talk about the most recent win. So the Spurs were on a five game losing streak. Uh, then last Thursday, they're on the road in a back to back against the Portland Trailblazers at Portland both nights. So last Thursday, they get a win by 13 points at Portland. Um, they they really did a great job in this game where they led very early on uh, by as many as 28 points. Uh, you know, the Blazers would kind of chip into that lead. and and But for most of the game, the Spurs did um, hold a comfortable double-digit lead. They ended up winning. Uh, Victor Wembanyama, still on that minutes restriction, did a great job in this game. He ends up with 30 points and seven blocks in just 24 minutes. So again, Wemby still on that minutes restriction. We'll talk about uh, um, that minutes restriction a little bit later on in this episode. But, but with Wemby... Uh, there uh, against the Blazers, who were mercy, who, who were missing some players. Uh, um, the the Spurs ended up getting that win to end their losing streak, their five game losing streak, and so they got their fifth win of the season. So then the second night of the back of the back to back, the Spurs are still in Portland. They're playing the exact same Blazers team. Basically, all the players were still um, uh, there for Portland. The ones that played in that game, um, they were still missing some players. The Blazers, some key players, but again, uh, they had like Scoot Henderson, they had uh, Malcolm Brogdon, um, and a few other players. Anyway, the difference for the Spurs was that they didn't have Wembenyama, so the Spurs set him out um, due to what they're calling rest, uh, because uh, we know that he's on that um, that 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 minutes restriction due to the ankle injury he suffered in, in Dallas uh, before he even played in the game, and so because of that, um, he was Coach Pop had already said back in San Antonio that he would not be available, Victor, for both games of that back to back against Portland. So they set him out on Friday, and so without Wemby, it was a totally different Spurs um, team, even against the same exact Blazers team. So the Spurs went down by as many as twenty. Pretty, pretty early on they did fight back to get the game into crunch time so crunch time is when um it's it's a five point game whether you're ahead or behind by five points in the last five minutes of the game and they ended up losing though by six points um in this one though one notable injury for the spurs was that zach collins got hurt in this game uh, with a right ankle sprain and now he has been out ever since that point against portland so then we go to Sunday. The Spurs are back home in San Antonio. I actually went to San Antonio for this game. Uh, I was I was there to visit some family, celebrate the New Year with family. But then also I went. I, I attended the Spurs game as media, and so um you know I got to see a few of my friends there in the media. A lot of people were were, were out of that game. It was you know it was New Year's Eve expected, a pretty early tip off, and you know the Spurs ended up losing in a blowout. They lost by thirty three against the Boston Celtics. This was kind of expected. Uh, Vegas had the the Celtics basically favored by fifteen points, so it was it was almost an expected blowout. I mean you know the Celtics were one of the, are one of the best teams. In the league right now the spurs did have wemby back but they were without zach collins and so basic quick recap is that the Spur the, the celtics led comfortably in the first half then it turns into that complete blowout in the second half where boston goes up by as many as 37 points and that was pretty much it so the spurs end up losing by 33 then on Tuesday, the Spurs are on the road at at Memphis um, against the Grizzlies. They're back on the road. They lose by eight points in this one. Um, you know, this game was pretty close in the first half. We know that John Morant's back now with the Grizzlies. They have most of their full team back except for a few more starters. Uh, Memphis goes up by 18 pretty uh, in the second half. That's when it kind of turned into a different ball game. So, again, close in the first half. Memphis leads by 18 in the second half. Uh, Mal one, one, another notable injury for the Spurs here is that Malachi Branham did get hurt also in the uh, first half against Memphis. Um, I am recording at two 46 mountain time, uh, PM and the Spurs have not released their injury report. So I don't know exactly if he's going to be back for their, for their, their following game on Thursday. Uh, so Branham's out, out and he's an, he's another starter now. Uh, so he gets, ends up getting hurt. Uh, Blake Wesley takes a lot of the backup minutes there, there at point guard, but then also Trey Jones starts the second half. Uh, Wemby was still on that minutes restriction. And so something, something interesting happened there at, toward the end of the game. So what happens is with about three minutes left, uh, the Spurs are down by about 15 points and uh coach pop takes out Wemby for, for that minutes restriction. So he ends up, uh, you know, going back to the bench and, um, 
you know, I, I, I purposely went, went back and watched this on, um, on, on, on Wednesday morning, the day that I'm recording the podcast, because I wanted to see what happened because there was some, there was some reporting, um, um, uh, both by Tom Orsborne and San Antonio Express News, but then also by the quotes that the, uh, that the, uh, Memphis Grizzlies sent to the media and basically where Victor said that he checked himself back into the game. Um, it, basically, even though he wasn't supposed to, cause you know, that he was already under that, that minutes, uh, cap of 24 minutes. So I purposely this morning went back and watched just exactly what happened in those final three minutes. So he's sitting on the bed for most of the time. He's talking to, to you know side by side by Sandra Mama Kelly's feeling there's a few other players next to him and then um I don't know if it's like at the two minute mark or the one minute mark he kind of just I'm watching again and I, I went back and paused and rewound and he he basically walks by the coaching staff and he walks by by coach pop too and he basically goes to the scorer's table and at first pop look kind of just like looks to him but then he just doesn't you know it doesn't make uh, too much of a of an expression and then Wemby um you know calls Blake Wesley to check out and so uh Wemby goes back into the game for Blake Wesley the Spurs go on on a defensive possession. They, they get a stop, and then on the, on the following possession, Devin Vassell drives in. He draws in two defenders. He kicks to Wemby, who's diving, and Wemby gets a nice two handed dunk, and uh, and he makes it. Uh, he, he he dunks the ball. Then the Grizzlies have it have an um, a, a situation where the ball goes out of bounds against John Morant. They're on the baseline, so that so the play stops. When the play stops, um, you know because it, it's time to stop. Coach Pop immediately. Um, uh, calls for, for for Victor to come back into the uh, to the bench basically, and he ends up going back to the bench, and he sits there for the final two minutes. And the Spurs, of course, lose by eight points. What was interesting was that when Victor was out there on the floor, uh, Mitch Johnson, the assistant coach, I, I don't know what he told Pop. Obviously, I'm just watching this on TV. He goes up to Pop and tells him something, and then he goes back and sits down. And then after that's when um when 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 Wemby goes um back to the bench. So again, uh you know, reading the quotes from last night, Victor basically s- said that um you know that he that he's getting frustrated with this minutes restriction because he feels like he's healthy, but he does understand that it is um it's it's in the it's in the benefit for his his long-term success for him to make sure that he's a hundred percent um accurate with or, or you know healthy with his ankle injury instead of trying to, to risk it but he said I, I don't know if that was more so in the heat of the moment that he just really wanted to be out there um to try to because again the spurs got the got the game within like eight points at, at some point there in the final two minutes so it looked like they had a chance to maybe try to make some sort of comeback so um i don't know if it, it, and then um tom Warsborn of the Spanish express news had a good article um wednesday morning just saying how Wemby is getting frustrated with his minutes cap so basically the Spurs' goal right now is to just keep him or not their goal but the the medical staff's um intentions are to keep him at about 24 minutes max each each night he's not supposed to be playing in back-to-backs and so um you know uh Orsborn did ask pop about this post game not not about him um you know Wemby checking himself back in but about him being on on the minutes restriction and you know when's that going to lift and pop basically said you know they still need some more um you know they're still going to take some more time there they'll eventually i guess go back and look at his, his injury um the medical staff and then determine if maybe that restriction can be lifted but obviously it's showing some signs here that he did this Wemby that that you know he is frustrated that he feels like he can that he can play in games um you know at at, at his at his max potential and, and he, he's not able to do that because of this um this ankle injury that the that the medical staff is monitoring so again that was just something interesting to note and I know it's something that, that I saw on, online on um, post game and I really just wanted to see exactly again I don't know what the coaches said to to each other what they said to Wemby but I just wanted to watch exactly what happened on film and you can kind of just watch in those final three minutes as that plays out and so um you know and Wemby was there on the on the sidelines supportive of his teammates as all of this was happening whenever he, he did go back to the bench uh, so overall, in the four, last four games, the Spurs actually surpassed uh, Vegas' expectations. So Vegas said they should have lost all four of these games. They didn't. They won that one at Portland. So they went one and three in their last four games. So now, where did the Spurs stand through 33 games of the season? So they are now five and 28 overall, still a bottom three team um, overall by record, which means that they would have the best chance of lottery odds if this is the way the the standings end up at the end of the year. Uh, they are back on a three game losing streak since winning that game at Portland, and they do have some tough games coming up uh first and then and then uh as i mentioned on the last podcast episode they have a pretty good january schedule um also ahead of them where they play some really bad teams out there offensively they're still 29th defensively they're 25th uh one thing i noticed in the numbers again just running the numbers uh fast break scoring has been an improvement for the team so uh since the last check-in i did they they're now a top 10 team in fast break scoring they're scoring 14.6 points per game in the fast break and they're also improving in their transition defense they're holding opponents to 13.9 points per game which is 13. So right there, kind of like around league average. Um, one thing I, I saw again when I run my numbers each, each night after each game is that um, the Spurs are sc- have scored 20 or more points in six of their last seven games. And aside from that Memphis game that they only scored four, five points, that was and that was a that was an emphasis for for the Memphis Grizzlies defense. Uh, Coach Taylor Jenkins said was to try to limit the Spurs' um, fast break scoring. Anyway, before that point, the Spurs had basically scored six games in a row, 20 or more points, and they hadn't done that at any point of the season. So since I was in San Antonio on Sunday, uh, pregame, I actually asked Pop about this. I said, you know, coach, 
uh, you all have um, had, had an increase in fast break scoring. Um, you know, the last at that point it was last five games. You know, five games, twenty or more points. I said, has that been an emphasis on your coaching staff, or is that something that's kind of just naturally happening? And Coach Pop, he he basically said no that the coaching staff is not making this an emphasis. He said, um, no, we've been trying to push pace all year. So he's just saying that it's naturally happening that the, the you know this, this is something the coaching staff has been wanting the players to do is push the pace all year with their youth and athleticism. And I guess now it's finally turning into something. In terms of what I see here, when I look at just like, you know, what changes has the team made? The main thing I see in, um, is uh, the starting lineup change. So again, putting D- Julian Champagne uh, in there in the, in the, uh, at the starting three and then having Kelton Johnson come off the bench, I have seen that the numbers have, uh, that's where the fast break scoring has really happened in almost all of those games since Champagne became the starting three. Uh, the, the Spurs have seen that that fast break scoring yeah, um, increase. And now I, I do want to get monitor, is this a small sample size? How, how long does this happen? Because when I run the, when I look at the transition numbers from cleaning the glass, the, the, the numbers say overall for the season, Champagne, this team's plays a little bit slower with him, whereas Kelton Johnson, they play a little bit faster. So again, that's just something to monitor was that they, they are seeing at least an increase in fast break scoring and then also um, just fast break um, defense. Now, uh, Kelton Johnson has now played five games off the bench. So I just want to do a quick check-in on how he's doing since going to that bench role. Uh, this happened way back on December 23rd against Dallas when he first went to the bench as, as a six-man now for the team. Uh, he's doing a really good job here in terms of, of scoring and productivity. Uh, he is having a little bit of difficulty with efficiency. So what I mean by that is uh, he's scoring 19.8 points off points per game off the bench in uh, and attempting 16.2 shots during this time frame, which is the most on the team. Um, his shooting splits are where I meant about um, inefficient. So he's shooting 43% from the floor, 30% from three, and 73% from um, from the, from the foul line in, during this time frame. He is the leading um, free throw taker right now. He's averaging 5.2 free throws a game during this again during this five game span, and that's that's interesting because normally it's it's, it's Wen Benyama who's the, the leading free throw taker for the team. Uh, he's grabbing five rebounds. Uh, he's averaging 3.6 assists to 1.8 turnovers in 30 minutes a night. Again, this is just by these five games. And so what we've seen is his usage has really increased where for the season, his usage is 21.8% of the Spurs' possessions. It's gone up to 27.6%, almost 28% now uh, of their possessions, uh, his, his, his usage. And what I've seen as far as after effects since that change is that Wemby's usage has also gone up. And this is one of the things the coaching staff mentioned, Coach Pop mentioned, was that by putting Kelton in the second unit, it would have give him a more ch- a better chance to be more aggressive when he gets out on the floor. And then Wemby Yama and Vassell can kind of run the first first unit get more possessions there to run the offense and so we are seeing that Wemby's numbers have just drastically increased as well with Kelton now going to the bench but the player who's having a little bit of struggles with this I'm kind of trying to finding his way is Devin Vassell his usage has actually gone down by about two percent not too much of a big difference but again you would expect Vassell's usage to go up whether that's assisting or um, getting um, you know taking shots or free throw attempts but it hasn't since this change was made um, only when Benyama's um, usage has really gone up so again that it's a very small sample size it's only been about four or five games uh, for these players in this new role, but um, that'll be something interesting to watch. And I, I know that Vassell's just had a tough time right now shooting the basketball. He's had some some um, low shooting percentage nights uh, with the team. So again, he could just be going through a, a small shooting slump right now. But again, those are just some quick observations of how um, Kelton's doing off the bench and how um, how Wemby's um, you know definitely seeing a use, an increase in his usage despite um, being on this minutes restriction uh, right now. And now for the last topic, I just want to go over some roster changes that the team made this past uh, in these past few days and just an overview of where they stand right now. So uh, last Friday, the Spurs um, uh, made made a roster change. They waived Charles Bediaco, who was on a two way contract, uh, mainly because Bediaco had uh, suffered an injury, according to Chris Haynes of, of a bleacher report, and he was going to be out for six to eight weeks. And so, um, you know, his contract for the two way would have guaranteed, I think on, it's on January 5th. And so, you know, uh, they already had Charles Bassey injured, so they, they they definitely need some depth out there, especially with Zach Collins dealing with injury, with Wemby on a minutes restriction. So they needed some some depth in, in the in the big man position. And so they did waive Betty Yako. Um, again, he's supposed to be out six to eight weeks, so maybe when he gets healthy again, he, he uh, you know another NBA team might pick him up, or maybe if the Spurs have a vacancy, they can try to look at adding him again. And so who they did sign in his place on Monday was uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to say his name very slowly at first, and then I'll try to get faster. So it's a uh, Mama D. Diakite, uh, Mamadi Diakite. Um, he's, he, he was signed to a two-way contract on Monday. He's, he's a six, nine big, uh, from the G league Westchester Knicks. Now he hasn't played with the Spurs yet. He, uh, he, he, um, he was available for the game um, on 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 a Tuesday, but uh, again, he hasn't logged many minutes yet. And and again, unless uh, multiple players are out big, so I, I think that's the only time you'll see him get some minutes. Another new move the Spurs um, made was on Tuesday. They they applied to the NBA for a disabled player exception. For Charles Bassey, since we know that Bassey's out for the year with a season-ending injury, 
if that gets um if that application gets awarded by the NBA, they say yes, then the Spurs will get a, a one point three million dollars available to either sign a player, uh, claim a player off waivers, or trade for a player. So again, that player, whoever they were to add, if that happens, that player would have to have a contract within one point three million dollars. And so, why is one point three million dollars a number? It's because when you apply for that that DPE, the uh, disabled player exception, it's the amount of the player who's injured. So the Bassey's contract is two point six million, uh, split in half. So divided by two is um, one point three million. So, again, there's a chance that the Spurs could be adding another player, whether it's via trade, uh, waiving, or um, or, or I mean, sign, uh, claimed off waivers, or by uh, signing a player if they get awarded that 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 um, disabled player exception by the NBA. And, and I don't think that they would get turned down by the NBA. I think that they, that would be that would happen just because. Um, Bassey is expected to be out, out for the year, according to the medical according to the medical um, um, report from from the team. And so just talking about the Spurs' big man situation, again, they are having some difficulty with um, depth right now. Zach Collins, um, a pop said on, on Sunday against the Celtics that he's going to be out probably two to four weeks with his ankle injury. It's not a major, major injury, but again, it's enough to keep him out probably four weeks. And then when Benyama, again, he's he wants to play a lot more minutes, but right now he's still in that 24-minute um, um, uh, per game uh, cap where he can't play more than 24 minutes and he probably can't play in any kind of back-to-back some -back, um, uh, consecutive back-to-back -back. so again uh, they, they are have some some issues with their big man depth and so um, you know we'll see if, if they get that D that DPE that disabled player exception and whether or not they sign a, or waiver or I mean sign or trade for or um, a claim a player off waivers and now uh, just the last thing I wanted to kind of go over because even though it is January 3rd that I'm recording this episode in about a month from now, the NBA trade deadline will take place. It's on February 8th this year, 2024. And so I just want to kind of go over the Spurs' roster where they stand and, uh, you know, in the event that they, you know, as we start getting closer to that trade deadline. And I will go more in depth at, at that, on this um, situation uh, as the trade deadline draws nearer. So right now with, uh, with Diakite, they have 18 players on the roster, so they do have a full roster. If they get awarded that DPE, uh, the disabled player exception for Bassey, they would be allowed to add 19 players, and that player would be allowed to be on, on a, either a, a full contract, a 10-day kind of contract. So they would be allowed the um, that extra roster spot, basically. So that's something to watch is that they could have 19 players in the roster if they add someone. Uh, where they stand over on salary, they're $1 million over the salary cap, so a lot of room uh, there, whether they want to make trades or sign players, which I doubt they will. Uh, in terms of signing players, I doubt they'll sign, sign a lot of players. Uh, just because they don't have roster room. And then they still have the full $7.7 um, .7 million room exception. Again, I don't expect them to use it. Um, um, they're available. And then lastly, just kind of two players to monitor in terms, in terms of the trade deadline drawing near are um, two unrestricted free agents this coming summer. And those are two veteran players um, off the bench are Doug McDermott, who's making $13.7 million this year, and also Jetty Osman, who's making $6.7 million. So I know that Doug's minutes have kind of um, been kind of inconsistent this year where he, where he plays like a, like a good chunk in the first half. Maybe he doesn't play a lot in the second half or vice versa. He'll play a little less in the first half, more in the second half. So it looks like his, his role has kind of been reduced a little bit this year. And then same thing for Jetty, where um, he started off really strong getting a lot of minutes early on but these last you know five ten games he's kind of seen seen a drawback in some of his minutes and also even his productivity um he's had he's had some um some difficult tonight sh shooting the basketball and finishing and kind of creating for his teammates so so again those are just kind of two players i'm not saying they're going to trade those two players but those are two players that they unless they have any plans of resigning those players they would lose them most likely in the offseason because obviously you know contenders or, or playoff level teams would want uh, either uh, jetty or doug in the offseason um um you know as, as unrestricted free agents so again we'll kind of see what what happens uh, with the Spurs' moves now from now with uh, between now and, and the uh, trade deadline on February 8th. And then lastly, um, thanks for listening to this episode of the Spurs cast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review on YouTube and your favorite podcast apps. This episode was written, recorded, and produced by Paul Garcia from all of us at Project Spurs. Stay safe and have a great day.